injury attorneys at The Advocates can't actually prevent you from being in a cycling accident. They will be by your side to support you following your accident. Our legal services won't cost you a dime out of pocket. So when you need an injury attorney, call us. We're The Advocates, your Utah personal injury attorneys. You didn't deserve to be in an accident, but you do deserve an advocate. Should I hit the music to start the show, or what do you think? I mean, are we doing a show today? Like, Probably not. Yeah. This is The Monty Show, the truth in sports talk streaming. When you want unbiased opinions about your favorite team without the spin, all you have to do is find The Monty Show, streaming live and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube. And now, here's Monty. Hey, Monty. Happy... Good Lord, it's already April 17th. The Monty Show presented by our good friends at The Advocates. Theadvocates.com, the best injury attorneys in the business, where you never reach into your pocket to pay The Advocates. You do not pay The Advocates anything up front. See, because you don't pay The Advocates unless and until they win your case. So you never have anything to lose. If you're asking yourself, do I need an attorney? Should I sue them? Uh, was this my fault? All those questions can be answered by the injury experts at The Advocates, and it won't cost you a dime. The chat with an attorney live online right now, 24-7, 365 at theadvocates.com. Uh, hello. A lot to get to today. We got to get to the massive brawl, the throwdown. It was ugly. There was blood. I believe there was seminal fluid. Like, it was an absolute Pier 6 brawl in the Monty Show members-only Instagram chat yesterday. Uh-huh. And it made, the, it made the cost of doing business with the Monty program pretty worth it. Mm -hmm. When Jake began insulting uh, Boss Frog... Shut uh, the fuck up, Donnie! ...about his allegiances to a certain uh, global entity. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, to which it drew a phone call. Wow. That we will have to discuss. A phone call. There was a phone call. Hmm. My a guy. Phone call. My guy. I'm grinding away trying to build a business over here, and the phone's ringing. And I'm like, <laughs> 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 it was awesome. That's what's great about this show. That's what's great about this show. You can have people defending dismembering of bodies in on one side of the chat and Jake on the other side of the chat. Get out of my way, dude. It was, yeah. it was pretty Get epic. Here. It was pretty epic. Uh, let's see who's first one in this morning. Hello. OG Gary. Sir, toilet squad. <laughs> <laughs> Gary was also involved in the, uh, the dismantling, uh, of Jake in the members only chat yesterday. Uh, small blue horses or actually small blue ponies. Hello. Uh, Mike Smith, BYU with a surprise hire as a new basketball coach. Hit that like button. I actually thought it was a good hire. And BYU fans are livid. It's only surprise because you've never heard of the dude. Yep. It's not really a surprise when you look at his credentials. I agree. Uh, Dakota, hello. Uh, Pete Forte, hello. Uh, why don't we start with um, what went down in Ann Arbor yesterday? Michigan... <laughs> And Michigan fan, I, I was, I got to be honest with you, Michigan fan, I want to pat you on the back because some of the Twitter Michigan fans that usually show up with their hatchets and machetes actually were like, okay, Monty, you were right. I'm sorry. We got it wrong. Uh, Monty, our, uh, we overcooked the burger a little bit, okay? So let me get this right. Look. Jimmy was just, you know, he was hanging out at a burger joint on campus and he happened to see some highly, highly regarded football recruits from the other side of the country who knew they were in Ann Arbor. Jimmy certainly didn't. He saw him sitting there, Monty. They were hungry. Hey, got him a couple extra fries. What's the big deal? My guy just walked over and bought him a cheeseburger. This is not a recruiting violation. This shit's oh, going good. Oh, wait. It turns out that it was more than, oh, Monty, it was just a cheeseburger. Yeah, it turns out that's not the case, you stupid fucks. No, you guys hate Michigan. You don't even watch Michigan football. Why do you hate Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> too much. Probably too much. 
Uh, the details about Michigan and their, um, you know, cheeseburger semantics uh, have come to light. And it turns out that Michigan completely and wholly owned yesterday or over the last several weeks owned their part and the actions of their former head coach and a lot of his assistants during the COVID dark period, they owned up to all of it. They accepted the punishment and the, the accusations and the punishment that was handed down. And you can see the writing on the wall here, right? Jim Harbaugh, now the coach of the Wales Vagina Los Angeles Chargers, uh, was wholly thrown under the bus. And they not only threw him under the bus, they ran him over, backed up, and made sure to crush his cranium with the bus at That's Michigan. Insane. And they absolutely did. They got off easy. I think a lot of people uh, expected that Michigan was going to fight this. And then Jim Harbaugh did what he always does, which is betray his employer, which he will do to the Spanos family in Los Angeles. It's not a matter of if, but when, in my opinion. And he exactly did that to Michigan. He knew all along that he was going to leave. We talked about it on this show. Uh, the whack job Michigan fans showed up and said, oh, Jimmy's never leaving, Monty. What do you mean? He's got cheeseburgers for all the kids. Yeah, it turns out he doesn't. <laughs> turns out he doesn't, and he did leave, and now he is going to be scapegoated for this. If you look at the penalties that were handed down by the NCAA against Michigan, there you have them, and they are fairly light. Three years of probation, they will lose some ability uh, to recruit, and they will pay some fines. Nominal fines at that. Jim Harbaugh, it's your turn. This is just getting going. For Michigan, the recruiting dark period scandal is over. And there are some things involved in that we need to clarify. For Michigan, they owned up to what they did. Current and former assistants, their former head coach, it's over for Michigan as far as the COVID dark period recruiting violations go. For Jim Harbaugh, it's just getting going. As far as Michigan's other investigations, I would remind you that those haven't even gotten started yet with the NCAA. You are talking about, and I think, Michigan fan, I think it's time that you own up to your bullshit because we're ta talking about criminal investigations into Matt Weiss and computer crimes that had the FBI on your campus for an extended period of time. We have not gotten anywhere close to resolution on that. The Connor Stallion's uh, cheating scandal that you say never was Turns out it was. Fine Steeler guy. Yeah, uh, turns out that's not been adjudicated here either. We are just getting going. And I think for the first time, Michigan fan is getting a look behind the strategy and the trajectory that Michigan is going to take to extricate themselves from as much of this punishment as possible. And a lot of that is going to be to hang a big guilty sign around their own neck and really throw the anchor in the waistline of Jim Harbaugh. And Jake, I think it is exactly the right strategy to take. Well, yeah, and, and I think that the NCAA is, is, was very clear yesterday that, that this, this, what came out yesterday is very much separate from the sign stealer guy situation and the Matt Wise stuff. And I think that was a really important detail that I think a lot of people were talking about is that the NCAA is not saying that this is over by any stretch of the imagination. They're, they're simply saying, hey, this is the COVID dark period stuff. Now we're moving on to the next thing on the ledger. And I think that's the the hard part if you're a Michigan fan is that you, you understand that, okay, this chapter one is over with. Now we're on chapter two. And I'm curious what the uh, you know what the NCAA is going to do in terms of discipline not just for Jim because obviously he's going to have a show cause and we all know the drill but I'm curious if if the NCAA decides to give Michigan as a university more discipline because he was the head coach because you know again they they lacked institutional control I'm curious how that is sort of defined and interpreted by the NCAA given the situation. But yeah, I mean, I think this is the day that we've been telling you has been coming. We knew that this was going to happen. We knew that, that again, it was going to be the, the, the sign stealer guy stuff is going to come out, uh, in, in, you know, in May or June, we've been telling you that for, I don't know how long and Michigan fan wants to continue to deny it. And, and, and we've, we get countless DMS and people saying, Oh, where's the discipline? Where's the discipline? Well, here you go. 
discipline trains here. It's starting. It's beginning. And and I just think for Michigan fan, the question I have for you is the same question I asked on the day you won the national championship. Was all this BS worth your time? When you can't do anything for the next probably five years effectively, was this national championship and Jim Harbaugh stabbing you in the back and leaving and betraying you, was all this worth it? Because I'm, I'm not he, sure he it is. He loves Michigan. He would never leave Michigan. Yeah, that's why he's in sunny San Diego wearing powder blue and you're still you're still in well, Los Angeles. Los thing. Angeles, yeah. whatever it Living is. Living in a camper. Yeah, nice. Uh, Classic Jim Harbaugh. But Jake, it was just cheeseburgers for hungry kids during COVID. Cheating, lying, it, and then playing the victim. It it is, which is funny you bring that up because look at the statement that uh Jim Harbaugh's attorney, Tom Mars, gave to ESPN. <laughs> this might be the best part of the whole story. Do we need uh, music? I you should. Okay. I filed a lengthy response to the notice of allegations on behalf of Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> After he ate his cheeseburger, <laughs> I mind you. <laughs> which unfortunately hasn't been made public and will probably never see the light of day. Pause. Uh well, by the way, the NCAA threatened to suspend Jim Harbaugh multiple times because Tom Mars wouldn't shut up during the investigation. <laughs> this is the same guy who now continues uh, to ESPN, quote, that concluded Coach Harbaugh's participation in the case. I saw from Ward Manuel's statement that Michigan changed its position for the purpose of moving forward. Nice quotes. Which doesn't surprise me considering that Coach Harbaugh is no longer Michigan's head coach. Well, wow, holy wow. Jesus. Rocket Who knew? Science take there, bud. Who knew? I can almost hear the wheels of the bus going wump wump. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes that's the way things go in college football. So you have Bro. Jimmy, Jimmy's boy. Hey, boy. You have Jimmy's boy over here saying, oh, they threw us under the bus. Can you believe this shit? You threw yourself under the bus, you jag. And then there is Michigan's violations, right? Good luck reading that. They essentially, they're accused of uh, staff members engaging in on and off field coaching activities, including providing technical and tactical skill instruction to student athletes uh, when you're not allowed to do that. Um, Impermissible in-person recruiting contact during the COVID-19 dead period. The coronavirus. Impermissible tryouts in programs exceeding the number of allowable, countable coaches. Math is hard. The negotiated resolution also involved the school's agreement that the underlying violations demonstrated a head coach responsibility violation. Hey, mother... <laughs> uh, it, it's called a lack of institutional control. Money, that's not true. Money. That never happened. Okay. Lack of institutional control how many times right here dude how many times did we say hey it doesn't matter never happened knew, or did it didn't know or if it happened or didn't cheeseburgers happen. for the kids money dude i don't care if that thing is a double cheeseburger with a 50 piece nugget this guy's getting taken down 100%. a former head coach failed to meet his responsibility to cooperate with the investigation okay so another point another point for michigan fan well monty you hate jim harbaugh you're saying that he's not cooperating with the investigation well it turns out monty who knew cheeseburgers for the kids who knew uh, oh. the school also agreed that it failed to deter and detect the impermissible recruiting contact <laughs> lack of of institute <laughs> lack of institutional control let bitch right. let me get this right michigan is saying it, it failed to recognize the violations wow dude who knew you didn't know what jimmy was doing? and did not ensure that the football program adhered to the rules for non-coaching staff members mm. which leads to the agreed upon penalties in the case three years of probation for the school of fine recruiting restrictions alignment with the level one mitigated classification the participation in individuals have also agreed to a one-year show cause order consistent with the level two standard level two mitigated classification of their responsible act and uh, uh, cheeseburgers Yay. for the kids money come on guy come on but now michigan fan can you stop fellating jim harbaugh do you understand now that he did real damage to your program? Monty, he just gave kids some cheeseburgers. Yeah. No, he didn't. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. No, he didn't. 
No, he didn't. He broke significant recruiting rules. He broke significant allocation of time and labor rules. He had and demonstrated a lack of not only institutional control, but a flagrant, a flagrant policy and modus operandi, a way of doing business, ignoring and skirting NCAA rules, which every one of you Michigan hyenas denied. Yeah. And now it's in black and white. And I can only tell you what I've told you from the beginning of this back to what? Last summer. Through the fall, through the suspension you said wasn't going to happen. And now Michigan is not defending him anymore. Michigan's not looking for alumni sitting on the judges bench. They recognize they're in real trouble. And that's the part that I think you're going to have to reckon with at some point. Well, and this is what's so incredible to me, this part of the conversation for Michigan. Like, you guys remember when we talked about this for for several months on end. My main concern for Michigan as a university was always that you were tarnishing your, your brand as an institution over Jim Harbaugh. Like, yeah, did he win a national championship through all this? Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. But now do you look like a complete and utter buffoon for the way you handle this? Yes, you do. And at some point that has to matter. If you're uh, an alumni, a fan, it, you know, if you're Santa Ono, like if you're any of these dudes, like this has to matter. And and I don't know why people continue to go out on a limb for Jim Harbaugh. I, I really just don't understand it because now it's like I don't get it. you're sitting here getting disciplined for this now. And again, I just keep coming back to the question. Was it all was worth, it worth it? it? Because if it wasn't worth it, y- y- this is a mistake. This is, this is, this is, you know, years of bad decision making for what? And and that's my and thing. And you knew he was doing it. Yeah. And so now it comes out in this discipline. Oh, well, Michigan didn't know and they had no clue, but clearly they did know based on the way you were behaving in the heat of the moment. And the bigger issue here is, again, you allowed Tom Mars, the attorney for Jim Harbaugh, to slam the NCAA during their investigation. What did we tell you when he was doing that? That's a huge mistake. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh attacking the NCAA. What did I tell you at the time? He's doing this for one reason. Because he's out. He's leaving. Jim Harbaugh uh, basically didn't give you a reach around. He gave you a pat on the head and then walked out the door without leaving money on the dresser. Yeah. I, I, I At some point, you are going to have to recognize you're in a lot of trouble. And if the, uh, who knows what these penalties will be? Jim Harbaugh will never coach another college football game. Never. I think that much is very clear. He is going to get, somebody told me yesterday they thought he was going to get a 10-year show cause order, which would be never before seen. I Like, that would be incredible. And especially for a coach who just won a national championship Mm -hmm. to get a 10-year show cause order. Yeah, and and I think, you know, and probably don't have time today, but I think we could dedicate a whole show to what are the impacts, you know, of college football in the bigger picture off of this, like, you know, well, you you just had a head coach win a national championship through cheating, essentially through violations, through doing it all the wrong way. And now we're in a situation where, you know, all this super league talk is happening and NIL and, and portal stuff. And, and the game is just changing. And, and I'm telling you, this has an impact on that people. I guarantee you there are head coaches out there. Um, you know, who, who are like, okay, cool. We can, we can screw up the rules to win for one year. We can, we, we can, we can do whatever we need to do because we know the NCAA is going to take forever to discipline us. Yes. We, we know that it's retro. We know that it's retroactive. So we're saying, Hey, we're going to do this and then we'll get disciplined down the line. And by the way, we're going to go ahead and dip out of this job after we win a natty because we're good. So it's like, what, what's really stopping anybody from doing any of this? And this has been my gripe with the NCAA for years. There is no, 
oh, it's Monday and you broke the rule. Cool. Tuesday you're getting you're getting that ass beat. That's not how it works with the NCA. They want to take their time and they want to be plotting. So I appreciate the discipline. I appreciate you know what's come out and everything that they've said. Totally get it. But I just think until the 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 way we go about enforcing the rules and regulations when someone breaks them, yeah. I, I, it doesn't matter because we know that this stuff is going to continue to happen. So that's what's so fascinating about it. Michigan, you know, as a university, as an athletic department, looks silly today, in my opinion. I would agree with that. And, and, and I think you look irresponsible. I think you look like you were, honestly, what it looks like to me is you were desperate to win. That's what it looks like because – Again, we and we talked about this so much. Jim Harbaugh and that football program weren't doing anything. No. And then all of a sudden, things got turned up because he started going into what I would call the gray area in the moment. And, the gray area. And you can't tell me that there were not conversations with Ward Manuel and Jim Harbaugh where Jim was like, hey, like, we kind of need to we need to change something here. We need right. to we need to, you know, stem the tide, change the flow. Like we got to have something. But do that, you agree that that they have bailed on him? Like they have just wholesale yeah, walked away from because him. Because what did he do? He bailed on them, and this is what their behavior has been for how long? I mean, Michigan has been Michigan as an athletic department, like Ward Manuel, Santa Ono, and and Michigan as a school have been reactive to Jim. So Jim does X, Michigan's going to do Y. So. So Jim's saying, hey, well, I'm I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back, even though we all knew he was leaving. And what did Michigan do? You know, highest paid contract ever. You know, hey, contracts on the table for I can't remember how many years it was, but basically highest paid head coach we've ever seen in college football. Like Michigan was desperate to keep, you know, keep dating Jim Harbaugh, if you will. To keep dating and, Jim and Harbaugh. Jim was like, no, dude, I'm not interested anymore because I know what's coming down the pipe from the NCAA. I just won. I'm going to go make that bread in the NFL. You guys can clean up the mess. And this is why I say, for everybody who ripped me over the summer and wanted to, wanted to say, oh, well, you don't know Jim, and what the hell but are you talking so, about? But your, your face is so rippable. Like, holy crap, dude. Like, we're out, we're out here trying to die on the hill for a guy who does it the wrong way every single time. And we just don't seem to care about that. Yeah, I think it's I think it's very interesting. Um, you know that that you you have this thing. We'll talk about this later. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> where you have this thing with Jim Harbaugh, where he just spat in your face, and Michigan fan, you were so willing to to protect him. And I think if you are a Michigan fan today, you can feel good about the actions that Ward Manuel and the athletic department have finally taken to own up to the damage that Jim Harbaugh has done to that university. Like, and I don't think we've seen desperation to this level out of a school I, to I, win. I, I don't know that we ever have. I don't know that we ever have. That you that you made babies with Jim Harbaugh like this is humiliating. The that you stoop to this level, all, all hyperbole aside, that a university, the level of Michigan, stoop to this level to do business with a guy like Jim Harbaugh that stains your reputation. And I don't think you'll ever get away from that. You will never get away from what Jim Harbaugh did. The cheating scandal, the Connor Stallion shit, like you'll never get away from mm -hmm. that. Just understand that you sold your soul to the devil to win a national championship in college football. And now is when you're starting to write the checks for that. And this, this, this punishment for Michigan, I agree. It is light and it is only light because I think they rolled on Jim Harbaugh. I think that's the only reason that you're getting three years of probation. You're you're getting a slap on the wrist here. This is this is a nothing burger. Yeah. Unlike the cheeseburger from right. the, the COVID dark period, this is a nothing burger. If you're if you're Michigan, this was the exact right tack to take because the NCAA, in all likelihood, in all likelihood, is out for Jim Harbaugh. If you're a Michigan fan, what you need to hope is that this is how the NCAA is going to adjudicate the rest of these, these penalties. And that they're going to go light on Michigan and they're going to go real heavy on Jim Harbaugh, which I, <clears throat> I think most people expect, but light is a very relative term because most people expect that there will be significant scholarship reductions and recruiting activity limitations for Michigan for about the next three years. Well, And, and I think when you look at this, this punishment that Michigan got here for the COVID stuff, like yes. I, I think the the fact that it's light really speaks to the concept of cooperation between Michigan, the Big Ten, and the, the NCAA. The level yeah. of cooperation, the moment that Jim left, 
everything changed at but, Michigan. But like, do you you remember like we talked all about how you know when when the Big Ten you know air quotes right suspension of Jim Harbaugh came down yep. and it was he hey he was going to miss nine hours of time on the sideline you know. I don't think people in that moment appreciated what we were really trying to tell you in that moment, which was, yes, that suspension was nothing. That wasn't really a suspension. I I agree. But what it was is laying the foundation in the road work for later down the line, because at that moment, I'm telling you, I, I, I promise you with everything I have, Michigan knew how this was going to play out at that point. You knew. That, step by that step. You knew 100% that Jim was probably going to leave and you were going to have to do everything you could to keep him, but most likely he was going to be gone and you were going to have to clean this mess up. So right there at that point, Michigan decided, hey, we at least have to cooperate with the Big Ten because we know if we cooperate with the Big Ten, the Big Ten's going to go and talk to the NCAA, and when we get back to it and we get disciplined, hopefully that'll help our cause. I guarantee you that was part of the play. And that's why this discipline is light. So I would expect the discipline for Jim to be incredibly heavy handed, like over the top, heavy handed. That's what I personally, in my opinion, would expect them to do. Yep. Uh, Deontay Carter, first one in $10. Hello. Uh, U of M academia. And this is a really good point because I think we've spent probably far too much time talking about the academics and the minds that run Michigan and, we had really good sourcing up and through the 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 appeal in court, like going to the judge. Like there were a lot of people in in the academia, in the leadership, in the thought leadership at Michigan who were disgusted. Was the word that was used, if you remember right? Who were disgusted at the lengths and the financial lengths, the uh, moral and ethical boundaries that were being stretched to fight for Jim Harbaugh, Mm -hmm. who had so clearly in their minds damaged the university's reputation. So Deontay saying academia must have let U of M athletics know to accept accountability. Uh, And my hypothesis is that U of M athletics is going to continue to deny it. The beginning of the NCAA wrath is approaching. I actually think they won't deny it. I think. Deny what? Deny what? Deny the things that happened with Matt Weiss whatever the FBI is investigating, because we still don't even know what the, the computer crimes are. Yeah, I mean, what we incentive know, would they have to deny it? Yeah, we just know that there are multiple victims, allegedly multiple victims across multiple state lines. Um, That's what has been, you know, floated. Yeah. The Connor Stallion stuff, and and again, Michigan fan, I would, pull, I, guy. I would pull your head out of your ass on this because it's not, the evidence is not in question. The evidence is not in question about what happened with Connor Stallions. And the idea, and I'm curious how many Michigan fans will at least today own up to the fact Jim Harbaugh knew, in my opinion, had no choice but to know, uh, because if he didn't know, he he should have been fired, and he's derelict in his duty, which, again, uh, speaking of duty, uh, I would remind you, um, what are the violations during the COVID-19 dark period? I, uh, yeah. The uh, violations demonstrate a head coach's responsibility violation, and the former football coach uh, failed to meet his responsibility to cooperate. Hmm. So they're already saying Jim was letting the prisoners run the, the, the jail. He was already saying that. He was letting his staff yeah. run away and do what they wanted to do. Multiple members of his staff have been terminated. Jim is no longer there. I... Do you, do you think it's incidental that no current member of the staff is going to face punishment? Uh, hello, Sharon Moore. Do you think Sharon Moore, the offensive coordinator and the right-hand man to Jim Harbaugh, had no idea about cheeseburgers during the COVID period? Are you out of your mind? He absolutely knew. And this right here was a rollover to get Sharon Moore off the hook, and it was well done. This was what... I'll just go back to what I, what have I always said about Michigan? Those are really smart people. That's one of the top 10 law schools in the entire country right there. Facts. This was really well litigated by them. This was good negotiation. Mm-hmm. This was good execution. This was a very well-timed and executed mea culpa. 
This is well done yeah. by Michigan. This was well done by Michigan. Uh, all right, let's get into the comment section. I almost don't want to. Yes, Pollyanna, the Warriors lost. We'll talk about that coming up. Mike Smith, good morning, Mountain Mama. That beard, though. Uh, Michigan trolls getting triggered. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it today. I got to be honest. I'm ready. I'm uh, so ready. James, you can only have 25 <laughs> recruits per year. So once the limit is reached, that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Wasikowski, uh, you've admitted numerous times you're a Michigan State fan. So why are you slobbering all over Michigan and Harbaugh all the time? He's a Michigan fan. Yeah, he's a Michigan fan, bro. He's a Michigan fan. Uh, Bob Pennington, you have and you hope and you wish, but you don't know squat. So now, Bob, you're clearly new here. Oh, you're saying that to us? You're saying we don't know squat? So I'm just going to ask you, what did we get wrong? Yeah, please. Learn us since we don't know anything. Please. And I'm sure Waskowski's here because somebody mentioned him. Eric, what did we get wrong on this? I'm I'm asking for a friend. Because this played out. Precisely how we said. Literally. How I we know. Said. We're just the hacks on YouTube. We don't know anything about nothing. No, yeah, and, and ask all the, the people on X, formerly known as Twitter, what we know. I mean, we don't know anything. We don't yeah. have sources. We said what we allegedly said. Yeah, I mean, we're just hacks and don't know anything and... Can't you know. add new drops to the show. You no, know. I can't do it. I mean, technical uh, difficulties, you know? Bobby Fowler. Hey, Bobby. Robert, good to see you. Wasikowski, I read that one. OG Gary, wellness check on Sammy and Ferris. Seriously. <laughs> Dak and a Tubbs. Uh, Dakota was also in the middle mm. of the fracas. In the, if you're not in the members only that group. That was such a heated debate yesterday. If you were not in the members only group, I just don't know. I just don't know what you're not living life. Okay. Quick sidebar, quick sidebar, two minutes. So last, so we have this heated discussion in our members only group yesterday about, we'll just call it world happenings. And <laughs> world. Happenings. so, so last night I was like, let me go on YouTube and just to look go. for, look for some speeches. Like what did, what did George W. Bush say when he addressed the nation and what was it like? And I have to say, we were more unified as a country at that time, which is incredible. What to party me. was was my was W in? Yeah, he was a Republican. And somehow, but what was he on? What was he on September twelfth of two thousand one? He was an American. Yeah, America. Anyway, yeah. later in the back show, to, back to the comments, back to the top. Uh, how dare Jim not give them a reach around when he left? The nerve of that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're That's not wrong. Guy. That's my guy, Pooty, right there. Uh, RJC loaner phone. Eric, do you need a tissue? Oh, boy. No, he needs a loaner <laughs> phone. Uh, James, hope you're feeling. James was all pissy last week. He didn't feel good, remember? Mm -hmm. You have a headache or something? I don't like Harbaugh at all, but snowy Michigan or sunny LA, I'd pick the West Coast. Me three. Uh, here's Wasikowski. I love it when people can't admit they're wrong like you. Please don't start attacking people, Eric. Like, that's bad form, dude. Uh, talk about yourself or your opinion. Don't talk about others. The irony. That's what Mike I'm Smith. saying, dude. Are you kidding me? The irony. Are you kidding me? The irony. Uh, I'm sure Eric has plenty of tissue right next to his Jergens. <laughs> oh, my God. Dude. Giggity. This is going to get heated. You can just tell. I'm not here for it. I, I, You guys, I'm seriously, I'm not. I, don't attack each other. Let's just have. Let's all play nice in the Yeah, let's rip box. Jim Harbaugh. San Diego State Glenn. Hello. University of Michigan Law School, quote, I love me some me. The best uh, representation I don't have to buy. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. Sean Schrock, Michigan fans think it's over. Nothing's over. Yeah. I, I will agree with this. I think it's very interesting that Michigan fans on X, formerly known as Twitter, yesterday were like, oh, it's over. We told you we're off of the hook. Via social media. Connor Stallions can suck it. Sign Steeler guy. Yet that has nothing to do with what happened yesterday. This is the COVID dark period, and it only relates to Michigan's involvement in, in cheeseburger game. Do we ever get, as part of this discipline stuff coming out from the incident. realize you used a cheeseburger to defend this prick. <laughs> like, does, has that set in now, yet? Now, when you decided oh, to do that, did you want a Ronnie, char burger? Or? Ronnie, he put extra pickles on it. Those yeah. kids were hungry. Yeah, they wanted some extra mustard, so Jim, we gave it to him. Jim's a father. <laughs> yeah. uh, excuse, uh, 
he's a developer of men. Yeah, he's a maker of men, Monty. A nice like, young guy, Jimmy. And, you know, he saw some hungry kids at a burger joint after they illegally tried out on, on Zoom. Doesn't get any more red, white, and blue than that. What, what is Jimmy supposed to do? He walks in. We've paid him millions of dollars to screw us over. He's got the bread, and he sees these kids out there begging with signs. Monty, they were cold and hungry. Have you been to Michigan? Yeah. It's cold in Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How do you explain this away? Uh, there should be no dead periods. There should be dead periods. Coaches have lives. Uh, let the big schools get their 25, and then the smaller schools can recruit. There absolutely should be And you know what periods. the sad part is? I'd be okay with this whole thing with Jim if it happened at a small school. Jim. Then I could at least justify it. Hey, yeah, you're you, a small school. You don't have a chance. Let's cheat and try to win one, and then we'll take this Yeah, play. like if this was Michigan State, nobody would be complaining about this. They got to do what they got to do to compete. Yeah, but see, Michigan State went full skin of Max on FaceTime, and that didn't work for them. And listen, we've talked about pickles at Penn State. We know how that story is. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on. That felt awkward. As, <laughs> I, you know. Uh, okay, Tanner Plummer, not going to lie. The fight between the Monies and Moe was entertaining. <laughs> it wasn't really a fight. It wasn't really a fight. Uh, Mike Smith, if the cheeseburger had extra pickles, I say let it go. If not, hit him hard. Yeah. Well, luck, Monty. Monty. You're, you're a guy who espouses about his love of the butter pickle. I don't see how you're not on Jimmy's side here. Well said. <laughs> Anthony Eason, hello. Oh, I thought this was about the sign stealing thing. My bad. No. No, no, no it's not. No, 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 no. Uh, let's see. Christopher Shannon, January all the way to May should be off. I think there absolutely has to be. Do you understand how difficult it is to coach college football right now? And I think I think the Sabinator talked about this. Yeah. You don't have a life anymore. Do you know that the month of December is hell? You're preparing for what probably, if you're a, a top coach, so if if you are, I, I was going to say Marcus Freeman, but Jim I, Harbaugh, I, Jim Harbaugh. Well, no. Okay, so if you're Jim Harbaugh and you've cheated for the, the you know, eleven months, <laughs> <laughs> and you're you know you've cheated allegedly eleven months, and allegedly, the, and then December shows up, it's like okay. Do you understand how difficult it is? Bowl game prep, conference championship games, recruiting, early signing period. Do you understand just how impossible it is mm -hmm. to be a football coach in December? Like, you have to have dark periods. Uh, San Diego State, Glenn, those were five guys cheeseburgers. Listen, Monty. Mine. You sit here every day and tell us how fat you are because you needed five guys. And you're going to vilify Jimmy over this? He just gave him some extra fries out of his Five Guys bag. What's the big deal? Do you know how many fries they put on uh, in, in a large fry at, at, at Five Guys? He was just being a good Samaritan, Jimmy's man. A, Jimmy's a good man. You let Jimmy live his life. Those kids needed fries. <clears throat> I'm like you, fat ass. Okay. Next uh, comment. <laughs> Jim got his contract money reduced, so he had to do what he had to do. He did yeah. what he had to do. Yeah. Yeah, dude. You know, sure. Jimmy's just, he's, yeah, I'm telling you, it's got to be tough to be Jim Harbaugh shaking those vacuums together on Connor's porch. Did. To try and make ends meet, right? Uh, yes, Monty, it was a fight. Well, you know, uh, the Paterno Pickle Palace live on <laughs> CBS from the Paterno Pickle Palace in Pickle. Happy Ending Valley, <laughs> Penn State versus Northwestern in a cock washing competition. The <laughs> cock. I am going to hell if there and is one. And in today's breakdown of the showers at Northwestern, here are the hurdles. Sorry. My Free bad. car washes for all the kids after the game. That's right. Jeremiah Champion. <laughs> I'm just excited for the new NCAA game this summer. I am. I admittedly will buy it. Do you think that they're going to have um, a sign stealer guy in the game, or what do you think? <laughs> All right, Central Michigan versus Michigan. Sign Stealer Intel says that they're going to blitz on this play. What do you think you want to call? Connor Stallions <laughs> at quarterback. <laughs> he, too, he, too, is better than Free Harbaugh. <laughs> Mike Smith, uh, what do you think the Lions are targeting in this draft, Eric? Oh, God. 
Yeah, the Lions are uh, unrolling. Did you guys see the Jets' new uniforms? Oh, you mean their old uniforms? They are their new. Oh, well, Monty, Monty, Monty. These are new. The stitches are stitched a different way. Gang green. Yeah, which you is know. different than gang green. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, I actually am excited for the new Lions uniforms. I, I, I am. Uh, Creepy Valley, sir. Yeah. All right. Creepy Valley. Uh, come on. The pickle. The, never mind. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Am I? I, I <laughs> I'm working over here. I'm working over here. Yeah, that's what they said. <laughs> oh! oh. <laughs> LMAO cock washing competition. <laughs> Sign stealer mode enabled. All right, here at NCAA football, live from EA Sports. Um, you know, here at uh, the Pickle Palace. <laughs> you now have sign stealer mode. Honestly, that's our stroking, guys. For $99.99, just download the Paterno upgrade. And it comes with a free vacuum. Who knew? Brought to you by Hoover. <laughs> Sign Stealer Guy will be a microtransaction. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh, loner phone. Is that a new Big Ten Olympic sport? I believe it is. Tanner Plummer. Monty, can we have another Wii Fence rant? Like, I'm just, what the? It's a wee fence. It's a wee fence. Uh, Jeremiah Champion. Oh, they have to have some sort of node to that. They do. Yes. The, the pickle. Pa the... <clears throat> I know you meant nod. Um, uh, San Diego State. Uh, it's one of those days indeed. 100%, yes, it is. dude. 100%. Yes, it is. We're, we're feeding uh, crow today. We're, since we're feeding crow. Yeah. Um, is the college football Super League going to happen? Well, the so, Super League's dead. Now, I would remind you. I'm always right. Right. We know that. I'm good looking. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom constantly talks about hitting that. Okay. We're all on the same page here on a Wednesday. Macaque. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so did you see the update to this story? In all seriousness, the um, Sportico had an article. Now, they didn't quote me directly or give me credit. Did you guys read the Sportico article? The Sportico article? Say that fast 10 times. Um, apparently, you guys, apparently, Sportico is reporting that there will be 70 teams. No. Uh -oh. Where? Somebody do a wellness check on OG Gary because it ain't going to be 84. Did, did Have you guys heard that number before? Because that sounds awfully sounds familiar. familiar. Yeah, like, I, I mean, it sounds familiar to me. 70 teams. Yeah, not not sixty or you know ten or twenty. Sixty nine. You know, sixty nine. Yeah, seventy. Uh, as we told you, Sportico, uh, who has seen a pitch deck now and is reporting on it. It's on my Twitter feed. If you'd like to find it, hey Monty, hey Monty, the Monty Show on X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, there will be eight divisions of seventy teams, including. The under league division. <laughs> the how, under league. How come San Diego State's not in the under? <laughs> in the under <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Uh, 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 here are the 70 teams. Um, notice that they're broken out into divisions, kind of like the NFC North and the AFC East and the AFC. Oh, you mean like an NFL model? Hmm. Oh, interesting. I wonder why we never thought of that. Uh, West, notice the Plains division. Nebraska back in the Big 12, essentially. Let's call the Plains division the Big 12. Uh, BYU, Colorado, Iowa. Oh, well, Caitlin Clark. Uh, Iowa State. <laughs> okay, wait. I, I wait. <clears throat> Real quick opinion here. Stop comparing every basketball player on, on SportsCenter to Caitlin Clark. Stop. It, don't do it. Everybody, Keegan Murray highlights last night because he was on fire, knocking out the Warriors. Oh, shooting it like Caitlin Clark. No, no, he's in the NBA, sir. All right, back, me. back to your regularly scheduled programming. Um, Notice the Big 12 in the Plains. I got seven hours of sleep. Yeah. Uh, The Midwest, Cincinnati, Illinois, Illinois. The Natty. Michigan, Michigan State, Ohio State, all in the Midwest. Look at the South, dudes. We call that the uh, SEC. 
Bama, Auburn, Georgia. Eh, Georgia Tech's not real. Kentucky, Mark Pope, hello. LSU, Ole Miss, Starkville, Tennessee, and Vanderbilt. Oh, thank God. We're safe. Um, you look at the Northeast, very interesting that the ACC is now the Northeast Conference. The Southwest is interesting as well. Arkansas, Baylor, Houston, Okla, Okla Light, uh, SMU, TC, SMU, TCU, Texas, Texas A&M and Tech. That's a hell of a division. That might be the second best division here. Then, of course, the commonsensical thing. And I know we don't do common sense very much on this, on this here program. On this program. But what did we tell you? that they were going to have an enclave out West where all of these schools would be back in the same conference division, Arizona, Arizona state, Cal, Oregon, Oregon state, Oregon state, uh, Stanford, UCLA, USC, Washington, Washington state. It makes total sense. And as we've told you on the show, Brim, I think this is absolutely the right way to go about this. I think when you look at, the College Football Super League. There are only so many ways that I can say this. Is it likely? I wouldn't say it's likely. Does it have a lot of hurdles? It does. But is it going to happen? I think it will. And why will it happen, though? This is the part that you need to latch on to. Because what did Sportico report? Now, call me crazy. Again, Monty. Monty. You don't know shit, Monty. Um, that... There will be a financial tiered payment plan for athletes funneled through NIL where 5% of all rostered freshmen will get paid or all rostered freshmen will get paid 5%. 15% goes to all the rostered sophomores, 30% for all the juniors and 50% for seniors and grad students. How will this be paid? Paid? According to Sportico, it's a football player pool, which will come from the Super League's TV money. And the deck also proposes a national broadcast NIL construct whereby players get the pro rata they deserve. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the TV contract and private money are going to come in and fund the Super League. They're going to combine oh. because as I continue to tell you, and I talked to a TV source yesterday, TV money is not endless. These guys are businessmen who have budgets. And again, I spoke to a person in the TV industry yesterday who point blank told me that all of the TV partners are on board, ESPN, Fox, CBS, and NBC. And there is a streaming component to this, which ESPN is very happy about. But you're looking at Amazon wants to play a major role. Amazon for the first time, and it is a it is a difference in m m the way that Amazon has operated. Amazon is being aggressive in trying to get their hands on major college football act activity for for Amazon Prime Sports, and I think it's exactly the right thing to do. The money is there. It's a matter of getting all of the people sitting at the same table agreeing to a construct of what this new super league would look like. My guess is we are, we are still at the bottom of a very steep climb. I think it is going to be very difficult to get there. I think everybody agrees with that, but the idea that the super league is dead on arrival is completely false. The conversations are happening. The proposals are changing the exchange of ideas amongst TV partners and these private equity people is happening on a weekly basis. TV, and I want you guys to grasp this because I think it is a really important component. The TV networks are not competing with each other. There has been a fundamental change in the way that they do business. And why is that? Because look how much change has happened at the top of every one of these entities. ESPN with Jimmy Pataro, you look at all the changes that have happened at Fox, at CBS, look look what happened at the Masters over the weekend. Did anybody notice who's retiring? Not Fern Lundquist who is retiring. Sean McManus is retiring. That's a huge change at CBS Sports. You have new leadership at NBC. Look at what's going on at, at 
Amazon Prime Sports, completely new leadership team there. There's new blood. There's new energy. There's new appetite to make more money. And streaming has to be a key component. And everybody, for the first time, for the first time, everybody in sports broadcasting is on board with the fact that streaming has to be a key component. You know what somebody said to me yesterday I thought was very interesting? The Masters may have well changed the game for all of professional sports because their app is spectacular. You cannot take in the entire Masters experience without having the Masters app. You know what else is spectacular about that? You know what we saw for the first time? We saw an uh, the Masters, one of the oldest, one of the most stuck-in-their-ways entities, embracing the fact that patrons can download their app and interact with the tournament live on the course. That is a significant change. The Masters app may well impact things like the College Football Super League, the NBA, certainly the NBA. You look at the the way that apps and local TV deals are being done in the NBA, there's going to be a fundamental change in the way that the next NBA contract is delivered to fans. The Masters app, and I hadn't thought about it. I, I really hadn't, but but I think it's genius. And, and you know who I think knows about this? Mr. Mm-hmm. Millennial over here. <clears throat> because what did we watch? How did we watch the Masters this past week? Mm-hmm. On, on an iPad. I got a brand new iPad with the Masters app and ESPN+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Did not watch it on CBS. Did not. We did not watch it on a TV. We watched it on ESPN+, Plus and the Masters app. Yeah. And I thought it was a really good point. A good friend of mine on TV who's a well-placed guy, top of the food chain at a major sports network. Hey, yeah, uh, did you see that the Masters app? Yeah, we saw. We saw. And the best part is this dude works for a company that doesn't have a great app. And they're going to have a great app. And why is that? Yeah, because of the Masters app. Yeah, I I think it's the way. I I think it's absolutely the way. It's the way. And I have to be. I understand that there are a lot of hurdles, but I will continue to stand on business, boy. Mm-hmm. It's going to be 70 teams. And what also did Sportico confirm? And not to be a red ass about it, but here, let me be a red ass. That this is only football. The conference structure is not going to change. Mm-hmm. They say it's 14 teams. I'm telling you, it's 16 teams will make the playoffs. And... Did anybody notice what Sportico said? What did I tell you? That there will be multiple tiers of playoffs. That the when you look at these divisions, there will be an under league playoff system that starts on Thanksgiving weekend. Well, look at look at um, if you take the banner and the ticker off. There's there should be a line right at the bottom, like an asterisk line that says right there that little fine print. Yes, these ten teams rotate annually via relegation and promotion. So what does that mean? Oh, that means that there's a lot of money to be run through because there's going to be drama. People are going to get relegated. It's a, and it is a good, it is a good TV product. When you have I, I, the relegation piece is going to be a huge fight. And I'll just be, be really I'll clear, just be honest with you. Let's be really clear: the relegation piece does not apply to anybody who's not in the pink column. No, all set, all of the teams that are that are currently in your P5s, P4s, though they're all in. They are not facing relegation. But if you look at the structure, I think it's going to be very difficult. And I think the most difficult part of this is how do you have, how do you have a competition in it, with the NFL if you're college football for the playoff, for the playoff eyes? You know how you do that? You partner with the NFL, which is exactly what I told you they are going to do. I think they are going to use the NFL. I can tell you right now that this private equity, these guys that are trying to push this through, have liaisons with the NFL, according to our well, sources. It, it makes perfect sense. Why would you not? Why would you not latch onto the whale in the industry? Right? If you take away the fact that one's pro and one's collegiate, if you just look at it as, hey, it's two football products. One dominates the space pretty much year round. The other one is more seasonal. I would say. Um, outside of like spring games or this or that, like college football, in my opinion, is seasonal. Yeah. You know, and, and to me, it just makes a lot of sense. And I yes. also think, you know, when you talk about expanding the viewership of college football, 
what better way to do that than to try to capture the imagination of the hardcore NFL fan, right? Somebody who knows, say, okay, cool. Like, as an example, wild card weekend in the NFL. What if they could find a way yes. to have to have college football integrated into wild card weekend? What if it was a thing where wild card weekend took place in prime time and college football was the lead in to the NFL? What if they partnered in that way and you were able to capture some of that NFL audience who is absolutely thirsty for football that day because they know it's wild card weekend? You can't tell me that wouldn't help your viewership. You can't tell me that having your your collegiate playoff games on the same day as a wild card weekend esque you know time in in the NFL season wouldn't help your your viewership. And the other thing with this NFL model going into college football when this happens, because I think it's a when, and I'm not saying it's soon, but I do think it's an inevitability. I just think that there's too much money to be made. It's too easy of a system to create. Like it just makes too much sense. So, so when this happens, whenever it does, you know, you're going to start to see, Hey, yeah, it's easier to understand. Now we're not going to have, uh, uh, what I thought was the right decision, but no matter what you think, a dramatic decision with Florida state being out, we're not going to have that anymore because it's going to be on the football field. So when the Jordan Travises can't stay healthy and you got to play Georgia and you get your ass beat, I don't want to hear from you, Florida fan, Florida State fan. I don't want to hear from from anybody yeah. who's like, oh, well, they robbed us because that's not going to take place anymore. It's all on the football field. Well, and you look at the way these divisions are are set up. This is not accidental, folks. You There was real thought put into the structure of these divisions because what you have is eight divisions. And you are going to have, in my opinion, um, you are going to you are going to have the top two, arguably a, a wild card system. Like there's going to be a system that is going to reward those who win games, and it's it's going to be just like the NFL. It's going to be games won and tiebreakers, and you either qualified or you didn't. There's no more. Hey, well, what is Jimmy and Pam sitting around a table? Because that's what y'all wanted, and now that you got it, you don't like it. You don't want it anymore. So this iteration, I think, is really smart, and I think that it happens based. It, it, it happens to be based in what everybody wants, which is relegation and promotion for the G five, which I think has to be a part of it. But you're going to have seventy teams, and my guess is you're going to have sixteen teams qualify for the playoff. Yeah, and that playoff is going to begin. Um, in mid to late December. And I think you are going to have the championship game of college football on Super Bowl Saturday. And you're able to maintain all, maintain all your bowl partnerships nationwide. And the last detail that I will tell you that I was told yesterday was um, that the NFLPA is a significant advocate for this system because it supports the health and well-being um, on a much higher level of college football players, yeah, which I think is exactly, exactly what the NFL needs. You need to bring in more well-prepared, healthy, and mature players to the NFL because you're you're starting to see, and we're, we've talked about it, we talked about it yesterday with the draft, you're going to see a number of quarterbacks bust. You're going to see, it, it is going to continue to be a number of high-level draft picks that simply are not prepared mentally and financially to perform at an NFL level. Mm -hmm. And I, I can tell you, sadly, I learned this firsthand with relationships I've had with a lot of NFL players. When they have issues off the field, they do not perform on Sunday. And whether that is financial, relational, do you know how many, do you know how many college kids are in terrible relationships? Do you think that doesn't apply to football players? Do you know how many high-level college athletes are in dysfunctional relationships with a with a spouse or significant other? It is an enormous amount because they're dealing with pressure. They're dealing with success. They're dealing with millions of dollars worth of, of financial windfall. The, the, the moment that they step on a high school football field for their junior and senior year, they don't know how to handle that. Well, this is going to prepare them for that because the other thing that you're going to see come in with all this new money and this influx of wealth for young people, you are going to see that there is going to be an education piece and there is going to be a mental and well-being support piece that is going to be injected into this 
because I think everybody, for the first time, finally, we are starting to see the powers that run TV, college football, the NFL and the NFLPA. And the NFLPA, I think, has always advocated for this. Mm -hmm. But you're starting to finally see that we're recognizing that today's 16, 17, 18-year-old is not prepared to be a famous professional athlete. And that the, again, Caitlin Clark, because everybody wants to compare her to everybody. Yeah. Those situations are very rare. But what did Caitlin Clark say? The enormity of being in my position has weighed on me mentally. It's taken a toll on my ability to function daily. Kids at her age don't like being famous. They don't know how to handle it. Right. They don't embrace it. You're putting, and I more look at, like Caitlin Clark comes from a well-to-do home. She's got two parents. She's got infrastructure. She's got family, a boyfriend. Like how, to me, that's the rare case. I look at a lot of kids now that come from single parent homes where mom's working two jobs or dad's working two jobs. And whether they're a latchkey kid or they're involved in whatever. And so they show up at college with drug addiction. They show up at college with porn addictions, children, ugly relationships, mm -hmm. right? It's this Trevor Bauer story. We need to talk to our kids, women and men, young women and men about relationships, and we don't. And so you wind up with Trevor Bauer, who, did you guys see the update to that story? The girl, the second girl who did, I think, an enormous amount of damage to Trevor Bauer. I think that is why he is not in the major leagues today. A second girl came forward and accused him of assault. She was brought up on fraud charges yesterday. It wasn't true. She made it up, allegedly. I Talk to your kids about this stuff, yeah. man. Anyway, enough of us, more of you. Uh, hour number two of the Monty Show, as always, is brought to you by our friends at Big O Tires and American Fork. Big O Tires and American Fork, your total car care experts. Hook it up, anything you need, friends. I'm telling you, yes, Big O Tires, an amazing tire brand. Um, I am dealing with this. I still do not have my BMW back. I am still driving a loaner. I bought a very nice BMW X2M, and it's sitting at my dealership. Because they put on tint and paint protection that was horrifically installed. And so they're having to redo it. And it was supposed to be done yesterday, and it's not done. And it was supposed to be done Monday, and it is not done. I know now that if I take that to Ryan at Big O Tires and American Fork, he did the tint on my Jeep in one day, and it was perfect. And you know why it was perfect? Because he's a local business owner. He can't afford to screw it up. It's exactly right. right. Every every customer for his business matters, you know, and 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 I think that's the that's the big the big thing here when you when it comes down to customer service and you know the the experience you get when you go to big box you're just a number but when you go to local small local business owners like Ryan and American Fork at Big O Tires you're gonna get that good experience and that is why hundred percent that is why you go to him you go out of your way to go to him. Yep. All right. Uh, let's get uh, Ryan Willie for $5. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, it's not going to happen. Uh, why would the pack implode just to be brought back to life? In my opinion, you're just saying what ESPN tells you to say. Mm. Okay. Well, the pack's not being brought back to life. Um, I think the pack imploded because of horrendous management. You add two commissioners that were, in my opinion, completely incompetent and inept. I uh, could not negotiate TV deals. You're not bringing the pack back to life. Uh, what you're doing is creating new revenue streams and new ways to make money. And what you're talking about, obviously, is the Western Front. But isn't if you put all of these teams back in the uh, back in the the fold here, what you're telling me is you believe that this is the resurrection of the Pac-12. You might be right. But the Pac-12 is never coming back. And notice the Pac-12 didn't fold because the product sucked. The no. Pac-12 folded because they were awful at managing the conference. Correct. They folded so, by, it, it is still, I'll say the same thing I always say when we talk about the implosion of the Pac-12. I can't believe it happened. 
Can't believe it. It was a financial gold mine. And they just couldn't figure out how to get the gold out of the ground, man. And it is as simple as you couldn't even stream your games on an app. Uh, you couldn't hire officials and 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 make rules and re re regulations to have good officiating. You had lawyers calling the replay booth. You were spending millions and millions of dollars on hotel rooms and, and front street offices in San Francisco. Uh, are you out of your mind? This is not about the Pac-12 coming back, my man. It, it's about what that what that is is realignment on a common sense basis, mm -hmm. which isn't having Stanford and Cal in the ACC, which isn't having UCLA, USC, Washington, and Oregon traveling to the East Coast multiple times a year. Like if you if you look at this, it's common sense. Look at the, in, in what it is, and I continue to say this, and I know nobody gives a rip about what I say. It's an NFL structure. Do you have the Chicago Bears playing Seattle and the Rams every, every other week? You don't. But do they play? Do they rotate around the country regionally every year? Yeah, they do. That's exactly what you're going to get here. You're going to get USC in Alabama. Why? Because the fans need it. It'll make you a ton of money. Yep. It's good for the game. But you don't want UC, USC and Alabama playing in Tuscaloosa and Los Angeles every year. You don't want that. You don't want, you don't want USC and Michigan playing in, in Ann Arbor and Los Angeles every year. You don't want that. That's not healthy for the kid, and that's not healthy for the, the programs and not healthy for the current co conference structure. So this is not bringing the Pac-12 back. And I'm curious where you get off thinking that ESPN tells us to say things. Like, I'm not really why sure would, what, what... Why would ESPN give a rat's ass yeah, about what I, we say? I, I'm not really sure what like what your, what are you talking your about? connection there is or what... I should be so lucky to have Guy yeah. at ESPN being like, Hey, Monty, here's what you're going to say on the show today. Yeah, like I, I, I just... Do you yeah. know how much later I would sleep if it's like, all right, Monty, here's your script today, bud. Yeah, we'll turn it on two minutes before we're supposed to start. Like, it's... <laughs> are you out of your come mind? Come on, dude. Which is fine. I appreciate the $5. Thank you. Uh, and thanks for being here. Uh, Aaron Wilson gifted a Monty Show membership. <laughs> membership. Let's go, Skippy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh... <laughs> Mike Smith, the problem is getting all the teams, ADs, presidents, and conference commissioners to get on the same page. So many egos to work with. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. UW fan Jim, who are you still a Jim? Oh, Jim, Jim Rome. That's why you're a Jim Rome. Who I fan. still have no idea where you can listen to, buddy. On X, formerly known as Twitter. I guess. Uh, I love the idea. No more bias experts that have not seen half the teams play. Wins and losses will be all that matters which I think is exactly what Florida State wants. Uh, loaner phone. Uh, federal courts will help everyone sit down and hash out the final agreement. Maybe. Because this is a really good point. And I have trouble saying that about loaner phone. But this is a really good point. I still maintain what I've said all along. The tipping point here is going to be the lawsuits. The retroactive pay that the NCAA and these conferences and universities that make up the NCAA are going to have to shell out to football players and basketball players and stick and ball sport guys and gals. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to make the super league happen. It's it, everybody seems to forget that there's a chance. Cause I don't see the NCAA winning any of these NIL suits. I don't even know how you would. Yeah. You'll be insolvent financially. If you lose them all, you'll be insolvent. And and I just, I'm just asking if the NCAA as a structure and a governing body goes away, it won't. But let's say, because that's what everybody tells you, oh, Monty, the NCAA is going away. Well, who makes up the NCAA? Me and you, right? Because we work at ESPN apparently, now. Apparently. Or no, they just tell us what to say. Yeah. Uh, the members, institutions, all these universities, you want to know who, you want to know who makes up the NCAA, you guys? Uh, there they are right there. That's the entire Yeah. Group. That's the list. Yeah. There you want to know who the NCAA is? That's it right there. All those that's the NCAA. And I don't know how people don't understand that. Yeah. That's the NCAA right there. So is what it is, man. Is what it is. But I think the lawsuits, loaner phone, I think you're exactly right. Uh Atlanta in the NFC West. Exactly. 
Thank you. The eye patch. ESPN is the overlord. Yeah, they tell us what to say. Apparently, apparently. they plan the whole show. It's and good to dude. know that that's why you're saying what you're saying because they're telling you to say that. Yeah, I mean that's you know I, I mean my what? my asinine takes are just straight from ESPN. You know, you know? I was talking to Pete Thamol the other day. Dude, Pete Thamol was giving me yeah. all my takes, and you know I. You know, while we're at it, I mean, I might as well admit that, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're, you know, Yahoo Sports tells us what to say, too. That's how we get, you know. Well, you know, I was talking yeah. to the guys at Sporting News. Yeah. They gave me my script and I said to them, cool story, bro. Now make me a sandwich. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, I'm glad that we're all on the same page. You know what I mean? At least now it's it all makes sense. It all adds up. Yeah. Um, Eric Wasikowski still going at Mike Smith. It's like they had an underwater basket weaving grad help them with their geography in the NFL. Well, Michigan alums do have jobs in many places. Uh, John Ham, our newest, our newest. Wow. Trigger Jake. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, don't you dare diss New Mexico State. Man, uh, I mean, wow. You know. Uh, Aaron Wilson simply says John Ham. Uh, welcome aboard, Mr. Ham. Yes, if you guys haven't uh, haven't joined our membership, um, firstly, why is my garage door opening right now? I don't know. Let's take a look. I just got an alert that the oh, Monty, Monty, hey, and Monty, ESPN guys are here. Because uh, my wife's amazing. I'm guessing she is putting out the garbage. My wife is. It's Tuesday, night, Wednesday, and I ignored the. We have the little A word that oh, says, -word. "Don't forget to put your trash cans out." Yeah. So yeah, that's you are too busy doing. breaking our, uh, you know, launch monitor later. Anyway, uh, join our membership. We have huge fights in the group. We talk sports in the group. Uh, we coalesce around pain and suffering of the Chicago Cubs in the that's group. Every day. You know, uh, it's $10 a month to be a member uh, of our members only content that gets you into our Instagram group. Join, select members only content, then DM Jake on Instagram, SLC Jake. And he'll put you into our members only Instagram chat. And it is a wild, wild ride. John Ham says, happy to join. Welcome to the show, John Ham. Now I need to create an Instagram account. Yes, you do. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. The eye patch. Kid probably believes windmills cause cancer, right? Well, I mean, Monty, Jim Harbaugh, he had to feed those kids those cheeseburgers. They were hanging out around windmills. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know. Yeah, I mean, the chemtrails that come off those windmills are incredible. They were out of foil for their windows. Yeah. They lost their protective suit. OG Gary, the garage door opens so they can slip you the script for tomorrow. Yeah, right? that's what I'm saying. I mean, I mean you, you know, know. ESPN's just telling you what to like. I mean, Norby got fired, so now he's rolling up to the garage. We've had some wild shit said in the comment section on this show, but in my opinion, you're just saying what ESPN tells you to say. Well. Well, I'm glad you think so highly of the showroom, you know, uh, Tanner Plummer. Yeah. The D backs walking off against, shut up, shut up, shut up. Why would you, why would you say that? Shut the fuck up, Donnie. I don't know that the Cubs played last night because every single one of our players is on the disabled list. Did you see Seiya Suzuki went on the DL? Yeah. Listening to Jed Hoyer on the score yesterday in Chicago. Oh, it's just happening. No, it's not. Up, Donnie. <laughs> I am ready to snap about the, the Cam Harrison says good morning, guys. Shout out to Mo Bamba. Shout out to Mo Bamba. Thank you. Uh Tanner Plummer, cheeseburgers is what caused cancer. Listen, Monty, Jim knew that those kids were going to Ohio State, so we fed them cheeseburgers. Yeah, and they put a little extra pepper on them. What happens, happens. You know, you eat cheeseburgers, chuffs. You know what happens. Yeah. Gets in that colon and wreaks havoc. Yeah. Go box. Uh, all right. Brandon Butler, dude, the IL issue is the MLB is uh, is a real issue. Dodgers are fielding a double A pitching staff. Seiya Suzuki strained his taint. Dude. Okay. So I don't want to hear about elbows. I'm not going to feel bad for the great gambler. I said, I said okay? he strained his taint. Yeah, I know you did. And, 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 and I'm saying that. I'm not going to feel bad for the great gambler. I'm not doing it. Buddy tore his ligament. It is what it is. The gambler. Yeah. Uh, I do not feel bad for the LA do 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 -yers. Um, They have been on a run lately of awesomeness. Now, the Cubs are 10 and 7. Um, you know, I... Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You lost 12. Did anybody see the Cubs game last night? I turned it off. 
my bowels were irritated after watching that. After watching Arizona put up a four spot in the fifth, and I knew that they right there when it's eight five, I think it was or whatever. I was like, we're done, <laughs> we're done. Um, because Kyle Hendricks, who Jed Hoyer on the score yesterday, fucking asshole. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're gonna give Kyle Hendricks a huge contract and a Shut long leash. Up, he can't get the Girl Scouts out. <laughs> he throws forty-one miles an hour. I'm still a human. No, you're not. You shut your mouth. <laughs> Kyle Hendricks, four and a third, five hits, seven earned, three walks, three Ks, I'm two sorry. bombs. I thought you said seven earned. Because it's garbage. And to his credit, Mark Leiter Jr., one of our top prospects, came up one inning, a run, not earned in a K. But you, you can't have, and I, I don't know if I'm the only one. I'm a little concerned about Adbert L. as a lawyer, our closer. Adbert? Adbert, he's a phenomenal pitcher who yeah. just sucks out loud. So wait, wait. three ESPN, saves at three one two year. Yeah, ESPN told me to say that. Okay, you're a closer and your whips over one. <laughs> Man, you know. God damn. And it sucks. It does suck. The Cubs. The Cubs <laughs> are. The Cubs injury list. Say a Suzuki, ten days with a strained team. Uh, David Bodie reassigned to uh, the minor David league Bowie. camp. Shut up. Uh, Justin Steele, hamstring injury. Sounds like aluminum to me. Jamison Tyone, back injury. Brennan Davis, who cares? <laughs> Patrick Wisdom, <laughs> king of the strikeout. Can't make the throw from third to first, you prick. <laughs> back injury. I'm, th I'm glad you think it's funny. <laughs> it's funny listening to you <laughs> rip these guys. <laughs> So frustrating well, to be a Monty, Cubs fan. I'm Jed Hoyer. We're, we're it's happening this year, man. And I, and I will say this: I, I you mother, you, you listen. Why don't you know. fuck off? Yeah, you'll give me my time <laughs> when they draft Caleb Williams, the beloved. I want it. You'll let me have my three days of glory until he shows up at rookie minicamp and drops dead ducks all over the field with pink nails. Because you. Sh <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? Do you think after he has his first rough practice, he'll be at the Gatorade cooler on the sideline crying? Can I just have one, just a week of, of good, let them draft Caleb Williams before we pronounce him a bust, which he will be. <laughs> but let, <laughs> let me just, let me feel good about Caleb for one week. Hey, who, who, who's going to throw the ball harder, Caleb Williams or Kyle Hendricks? Excuse me, sorry. Stay hard! <laughs> All I'm asking you guys for is a little compassion. <clears throat> Just no. let me, because we, I, the Bears are. No. Dude, it's Caleb Williams. Come on. One week is all I'm at. at. One week, one week after the NFL draft, just let me, let me rock my Caleb boner and let the me cat. just feel good about it. Rock my Caleb boner. Dude, I will, I will fantasize for the entire week and then reality <laughs> will set in. <laughs> and I will go back on eBay and start buying Mitch Trubisky trading cards. That I just, but for a week, just let me enjoy. Let me enjoy not having Bob Avellini be the best quarterback in the history of the Chicago Bears. I'm only asking you for five days. Go play intramurals, brother. Right, five days. Five days. Filet of fish, <laughs> Caleb Williams, and boners. That's, right. that's what the five days after, that Monday through Friday, after the draft. Right? That's all I'm asking for. Five guys cheeseburgers, red velvet donuts. Sex with strange women. That's it. And then multiple filet of fish at one sitting. Is it too much to ask? Caleb Williams, for what? just let me have one week to feel good. Because you and I both know the Bears are never winning anything ever. It, it's not going to happen. No, we dodged a major bullet. We didn't hire the asshole in San Diego who plays in LA. Right. We didn't hire Jimmy. 
Jim. You never let me bask in that glory on this show. You you cold hearted really despicable jerks. You never let let me have five days with Caleb Williams. That's ridiculous. That's all I'm asking. Shut up, Kyle. Bobby Douglas is not the man. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> Kyle. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. Please do not start dropping. I swear to God, if there is, if anybody oh. drops Steve Fuller in the comments section, I sw- and if you bring up Matt Suey's name, Shut I the will fuck up, slap Donnie. you in the mouth. <laughs> uh, UW fan Jim, don't worry. Rome will make Williams look awesome. So is Jim Rome being told what to say about Caleb Williams as well then? By CBS. I think the, the well, he's no difference. longer he no longer works for CBS. I know, but, but that's why he's able to be told. It's a distinct difference. What yeah. is your fascination with Jim Rome? I don't get it. <clears throat> the <clears throat> eye patch. Uh, Williams is looking to be a monumental bust. He's such a senti- sensitive kid. Yeah, because you can't win if you're sensitive. We want real red ass pricks as our quarterbacks. <laughs> can't be. <laughs> can't have emotions or feelings and win in sports. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me tell you something, sir. Sir Bob Lob. Uh, What about Mike Phipps and Vince Evans? Look, Vince Evans, I know Vince Evans. Oh, what are you talking about, man? Vince Evans was a really good quarterback in the USFL. Not. Um, Okay. Uh, The Williams is going to make everyone forget about Wilson in New York. Probably. Um. Delaric, Monty, that assumes the Bears don't fuck it up and draft Bo Nix. Why? <laughs> Why? Bo Nix is playing well. Yeah, Bo Nix is uh, is going to be a really good selection, dude. Again, am I asking too much? <laughs> the, 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 I get it. That's what they do. <laughs> the Bears have the number one pick. I don't Again. regret those decisions. Again. <laughs> the Bears have the number one pick. Again. <laughs> We're going to draft Caleb Williams. Can I just let me feel good about it? Don't bring up Bo's dick. Like, don't. Don't do it. Wasikowski. Is playing well. No, he's not. Uh, his, head, his head would explode if the Bears took McCarthy instead. Well. Well, we we they're actually going to draft a good quarterback. Caleb Williams is going to be amazing. Free Harbaugh's going to be a career backup. Sid Luckman, Sid, bro, shut the fuck up, Donnie. You can pull Kyle Orton, Brandon Whedon. <laughs> Thank God that would never happen in Chicago. Mirzinski, I think he's saying a Dunze. I. Oh my oh, god, god, dude! Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out. I'm gonna head out. Jesus Christ, dude! Do you think we don't know, guy? That's the joke, dude. Shut the fuck up, Tommy. <laughs> I can't, dude. <laughs> guy, we know, we know he's talking about Adunze. We know, we know. We know it's a joke. Rome. So Adunze's first name is Rome, God. but there's also this other guy named Jim Rome. So it's Rome and Rome and it all works together. God's not real. I'm Dude. Convinced. I mean, honestly, like, why don't you fuck off? Like I pray to God every day on this show. <laughs> like, come on, dude. And Sean Mirzinski is trying to clarify that it's Rome fucking Adunze. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm aware. I know it's Rome Adunze. Dude. His name is Yuda Van Jim. <laughs> He's the president of the Roma Dudes A fan club, guy. <laughs> Apologize to that man. We truly have hit rock bottom. I'm not. <laughs> well, Monty, Monty, better get, better get, uh, you know, Roma Dudes A burger, okay? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's an all timer right Monty. there. Monty. <laughs> Hey, Monty, I'm not, I don't mean to correct you, sir, but I think he means. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. I think he means Marcus Aurelius from Rome. Dude, that's like the the ESPN girl being like, oh yeah, uh, you know, are you not entertained? (laughs) 
Like, wow. Wow. Daniel Dixon. <laughs> Glad I woke up early today for Dude, comedy hour. I can't. I, you should just play the show and music because I don't know where to go from here. That was incredible, bro. I I know you didn't even try to do that, but that's one of the greatest <laughs> things that's ever happened on this show, dude. Uh, uh, John Jackson, Jake, you better check Monty's heart rate. It's not going to make it for the rest of the show. Dude. I, <laughs> like, I don't know how you, like, come on. Oh, my God. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> UW fan Jim, he gets it. Who's this a dude's a guy? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not even Friday. <laughs> but that's just, dude. <laughs> like, he literally is genuinely like, Monty, I think Monty. he means he means a dune's a not wrong. Monty, I love this show. <laughs> But we're gonna have to have a talk here. You know he means a d- Rome a dunesy a dunesy. <laughs> you know, Rome a, d- a dunes brown, a dunes brown eye. You know he I means he's right. You know Rome a dunes eye. Apologize to that man. Wide receiver, at Washington State. Very good player. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, Mike Smith. I saw that a dunesy post and was patiently awaiting for the response. Dude. <laughs> Kyle Visser, Rome wasn't built. In the day. <laughs> oh, man. Sir Bob Lob, where the deer and the buffalo roam, Jim, where the deer and the buffalo, Jim Rome. Exactly right. You know, exactly right. Loner phone. If the Bears take Caleb, it solidifies his place as Ryan Leaf of the 2024 draft. Oh, my God, dude. The Monday, one week after the NFL draft react, we can talk about that. I'm just asking for five days. Tanner Plummer. Sean is the guy who the draft experts disagree with Monty over. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Stepanek, how are you, my guy? People took the dumb pills today. (laughs) And Mirzinski's phenomenal. Yeah. Like, I love him. He's one of our long times. Uh, read that one. Aaron Wilson, get out of my way at Dunes, eh? Exactly yeah, right. you know what I mean? Like, it, that that was that was an iconic moment. Get out of my way, oh, dude. Man. It's been uh, a while since I've laughed so hard that I need to take a second to breathe. I think you, wow. Well, uh, I've been listening today, LOL, and I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Kay Nuren, you always make it worth it to wake up every day. Thank that you. Was, that was one of the most, honestly, that, that has to be on the list of all time moments. That was so good. That was so good. That was so good. Oh, man. And I need, like, yes. Yesterday was tough. Watching, watching LeCap almost go out of the NBA playoffs last night. Because if they had lost that game. Anybody see the uh, Lakers-Pelicans game? Fat. Oh, speaking of with, Jacked Off is here. Oh, well, nice logo, dude. That's got to be the best <laughs> name ever. Hey, uh, Monty. This is my, hey, Monty, this is my friend jacked off. Do you guys talk anything other than football? Never, ever, ever. Hugh Janus. Yes, we talk all kinds of things other than football. Uh, Watching the Lakers last night. Do you feel better or worse about LeCap in the Lakers? I actually feel better. I feel fine about LeBron. LeBron's game is, you know. Uh, as good as it's ever been outside of the athleticism piece. I think that what's really interesting is the Zion Williamson conundrum continues to be a conundrum. Everyone, all of his teammates, everyone in the organization is going to tell you it's the best season he's ever had. He's been available. He's played a ton of games. But but here's my point with this guy. So I agree. He's had a solid season. This is the first season where you're like, okay, cool. This has been productive. He's made a difference. Like He's helped us get here. There's no joy in Zion. Yeah, the problem is, is that in the game you needed him most, he got hurt. And I hate to say it, but that's what happened. He, so if you didn't see it, Zion Williamson is dominating. I think 30 points, like just dominating. They are all, they come all the way back. I think it was 16 points at one point. They come all the way back. Zion is dunking on people, makes this amazing layup. They tie the game and it is raucous yeah at the smoothie king mm-hmm. 
he goes up for a little turnaround jumper and hurts himself. They say it's a leg injury. I thought it was an oblique ab injury. Mm -hmm. They say it's a leg injury. He does not return to the game. He leaves. Violent and angry, he leaves. They lose. They now have to play Sacramento and for the final spot. Yeah. Good luck. Because Sacramento railroaded your Golden State Warriors out to play. What's the schedule on that? Is that tomorrow? When it's is tomorrow. that game? Yeah, tomorrow, I think it's, right? It's Thursday, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's no joy in Zion Williamson. But you know what there is? I think this Laker team has a legitimate shot. If Austin Reeves and D'Lo, mm -hmm. real quick on D'Angelo. It's Friday, by the way. Shut up. Uh, real quick on D'Angelo. The game's Friday. I yeah, it's Friday. Um, D'Angelo Russell last night, 7 of 14, 5 of 11 from 3, 21 points. Yeah. And I think you know, I think Jose Alvarado is a hamster. Mm -hmm. I think he is not somebody of value. <clears throat> this is the guy that was hiding on the bench and then would pick your pocket while you walked it up the floor. He talked a load of shit to D'Angelo last night. If you're going to talk to a guy who, again, on the game, is 5 of 11 from 3, you should probably guard him in the corner. Oh, that's right. You got dunked on and then left the game faking an injury. <laughs> so Ho Jose Alvarado talks just a boatload of junk. And D'Angelo stood in the corner and hit the penultimate three that pretty much ended their chances of winning that game. And as a casual observer, well, I'm a Bulls fan, so I don't really have a team. But as a casual observer of the Los Angeles Lakers, yeah, I watch a lot of Laker basketball. Uh, that felt good. I am not a fan. This New Orleans team <clears throat> is dysfunctional. Yeah, I mean, they're they're there's no question about it. They're they're not a championship caliber team, but they're that team that likes to be a pain in your ass. 100%. You know, they're 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 that team that's going to talk a bunch of junk, even though they have no business talking. You know, Zion's going to be yelling and screaming constantly when he dunks, and it just is obnoxious, you know? And, and so it's just this whole thing where where it's fitting that now they're going to, you know, play uh, what the, what is it, the Warriors, I think it is? Or, no, the Warriors are done. Who, who is they're going to play, play Sacramento. Sacramento. They play Sacramento. That's a tough ask. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think that's, that's a great a matchup for ask. New Orleans. And especially if Zion's hurt, if Alvarado's ankles are an issue – he twisted his ankle a couple of times. He got stepped on once. It looked like it hurt, but he was fine. Yeah. Jose Alvarado's that guy that he's hurt when he gets beat. And oh my, oh my quad. Oh, my fingernail. Like you don't talk that much. He, so he twisted his ankles twice. Yeah. And then talked a bunch of junk. Cause he hit, he hit a layup and made a great pass and then hit a three. And it's like, why don't you just run back to the other end? You've never been here before. You're talking junk to the Lakers. And I would agree, LeCap did not have a great game last night. Yeah. But he single-handedly willed them to stay in that game. And I think you got to tear the you got to tear the Pelicans down. You need to rebuild. See, I see Jim McCollum is a good, he is not a great player. Yeah. He was terrible last night. Zion was dominant and then he got hurt. <laughs> they have and, a good enough team to get to the playoffs and not much more than that. And and I think and we haven't had a chance to talk NBA in a minute, but I, I agree. The uh, you know we always tell you subscribe to the Athletic for Tony Jones. He had a take the other night that I thought was spot on. You know, as far as LeBron's career is concerned, like this guy's athleticism regressing and him turning into prime Magic Johnson is wild to me. But I mean, what have we talked like, about with LeBron all year? Yeah, I mean this guy. This guy is absolutely, absolutely utilizing his passing ability to win ball games. Like yeah. he's still scoring hundred percent. He's still scoring. It's not like he's putting up 10 points a night or something ridiculous. He's still scoring, but the idea he had 13 assists the other night in the first half is crazy. To and me. I'll, I'll go a step further. And I think Tony has talked about this as well. His defense is solid. LeBron is defending that team. When the Lakers play defense, they win. If they defend, they will beat they will beat Denver because I think Denver's on on rubber legs. I think they're they're it's gonna be tough for them to the Lakers are are playing noticeably quicker basketball. Mm -hmm. They are they are at the half port court stripe. It's what I ask about Phoenix. It's what I ask about Denver. Like who's got the legs left? 
the Lakers have the legs left. Well, and I think the problem with Denver is that is that they're they're just such a tight knit group. They've been there before. Yep. This doesn't feel like a big deal to them. They're just out here playing games. That's what I think the difference with them is. And obviously, Jokic is a hell of a player. No, nobody doubts that. But I, I I think that's the the hard part. So you know, I mean, I think you have to take them to get eliminated by the Nuggets. But I think that you 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 know. Jacked off says casual NBA talk. Now I know why this is a football show. Okay. How is it casual <laughs> NBA talk? This is what I love. Like guys what got new guys roll into the comments and they're like, oh God, casuals. <laughs> like you've been here two minutes and you're already being a jag about it, dude. Like who who's your team? I'm guessing you're, you're a, jazz, a fan? jazz fan. Which is great. I I which is great. It's fine. Anyway. My point is, I I'll be very interested because like the plans, the plans, <clears throat> yeah, plans have been interesting. I I look at uh, the games I, tonight are nice. I look and I look at Sacramento. It's over in Golden State. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah, like Clay and Dre are done. Did you see that video um, that went around last night after the game of Clay Thompson standing there on the court taking it in? A lot of people feel like that was the last time we will see him in a in a uni. Or we'll see uh, him in a in, Warriors uniform. Yeah, and, and that they're going to do something. If with him. he doesn't go to the Lakers, I'd be stunned. He's made, and he's talked about this too. He's made so much money. Yeah. If he doesn't go to the Lakers, I'd be stunned. But I think Sacramento, Keegan Murray last night, phenomenal. Everything I think we wanted him to be and thought he would be. Mm -hmm. And I agree. I think tonight the the easily marquee matchup is the Heat and Sixers. I don't know if Joel's going to play in that game. It, this knee injury, he's. I think we're looking at Joel Embiid having major reconstruction after the season because he's not right. You, he's missed some time here again after he came back. He's missed more time. I worry about them, and I know the game is in Chicago. Yeah, but you still got to worry. I, I don't think you can trust it at all. And Demar's playing out of his mind. Yeah, I mean, you need Kobe White tonight. That's, I mean, that's just the the beginning and the end. If Kobe White uh, is going to give you twenty, you know who they need? Hmm. They need Alex Caruso to to defend. Yeah, and they they're, they're going to have to because I think Trey Young is going to have a massive game tonight. And I still wonder. We'll we'll talk a lot of playoffs as it comes around, but you guys know my love affair with Tevin Booker and. You know, stay hard. I wonder. I think that's the series of the first round, dude. That that is, dude. If you don't know the the T Wolves and what they have on defense, you you better get familiar because that is a legitimate, legitimate defensive team. Saturday, yeah. Saturday and Minnesota's one and a half. Yeah, they should in be. That game. They should be. I agree. I agree. I wonder how. I wonder where what the Knicks wind up with, because I still maintain. I know, I, I know, according to Jack Toff, we're a, a terrible NBA show. Yeah. I'll say what I've said all year about the Knicks. I think they are a legitimate Eastern Conference championship contender. Mm -hmm. And if Jalen's going to Jalen, that team's going to be tough to beat. And I don't believe in the cat. I don't believe in, I don't believe in Boston. I don't think Jason Tatum is, and I know I get my ass kicked every time I say this, but I don't think Jason Tatum's a number one. Yeah. I think he and Jalen are number twos. And you need if can you imagine dropping Jason Tatum instead of Bradley Beal in Phoenix? They'd win a championship. Can you imagine taking Jason Tatum and putting him on the Lakers instead of Austin Reeves? They'd win a championship. You need AD's defense. This I think this is the also the first time I think I can say this. Anthony Davis's biggest, highest, best use is as a shot blocking rebounder. Because when he does, they win. But Jason Tatum, to finish that point, I don't think he's a number one. And I am, I'm not trying to be like hot take guy, but I just don't see him as a number one. Yeah. Uh, I truly do not. Uh, where was Tanner's comment? Um, so here's my question with Kevin Young staying with the Suns through the playoffs. Would it be best for BYU if the Suns lose? No. Why are Suns fans so upset about Kevin Young as a hire? Is it because Ryan Smith essentially pushed for him? I wonder if that's why B I don't understand why BYU fans are not jumping up and down. Now, Kyle Collinsworth yesterday on Twitter took some heat for what he said to me because he says that BYU should do at, in Provo what they did in Lexington for Mark Pope. Mm -hmm. Only problem is you don't have a championship team to pull up on a bus. And the only problem is you don't have a rabid fan base like Kentucky does. 
it, it, BYU fan, please take my advice on this. Stop trying to be better than everybody else. And just do what you do. Yeah. BYU is fucking phenomenal. Just be BYU. Be yourself. Be, be BYU. Be BYU football. Phenomenal. Be BYU basketball. Phenomenal. You don't need to be Kentucky. You don't need to be Duke. You don't need to be, you don't need to be Utah. You just need to be BYU. You're good enough. Yeah. Right. And it, I, fi I find myself saying this two, three times a year. Stop trying to be everybody else and just be BYU. Stop trying to find a way around the honor code. Live in that shit, dude. Stop trying to find a way around the, the church. Live in that shit, dude. It's who you are. It's what makes you great. But yet, oh, Kevin Young's not good enough. Oh, this is a fallback hire. It's who Ryan Smith it's wanted. It's a fallback hire. It's who Ryan Smith wanted. I know you're going to find this hard to believe. Ryan Smith has sway in Salt Lake. And not for nothing, Kevin Young is one of the hottest young coaches in basketball. Yeah. And I know we're going to get crazy. He's a member of the church. Jake and I, the hire comes out yesterday. What's the first thing I asked? Is well, he a member is, of the church? Is, is he, is he, is he? Is he a member? Is Married he Married in, good in the standing? church in 2011, I believe it was. Is he in good standing? Absolutely he is. Which makes him an even better hire. Yeah. Makes him a great hire. Now, the thing that concerns me is, what's our, what are his recruiting ties to the state? How well does he know the, the, the youth system here? How well does he know the high school system here? Yeah, well, he better get to know it if he doesn't. Who's he going to have on that staff? That's my question. Oh, and I think, you know, you should be excited because he's an NBA guy. He knows a lot of people. Yeah. By the way, quick side note. Uh, anybody notice uh, the Jazz hired Avery Bradley as their developmental guy now? That's an interesting hire. It's a very good hire. Jeremy Bolton, my guy. Good to see you. Uh, Brandon Butler, if you say Caruso three times, the mayor will appear in the mirror. And there he is. There he is, my guy. Uh, loner phone, bring me LeBron and son. Oh, I think there's a legitimate sh shot that Bronny's got going to wind up on the Lakers mm. and people are going to hate it. Chrissy. Good morning. I can't wait for Glenn river, AKA, uh, doc rivers to lose another three, one lead again. Well, Dude. he's got a built-in excuse though. Without Giannis ante your mama. I I'm telling you, Giannis is leaving, dude. I, I honestly believe he's leaving. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Kay Nuren, hello. Uh, the Suns will win a, a championship. Young is a great coach. He is. BYU is – I think BYU got a good one. BYU fans aren't jumping up and down. Monty, you haven't paid attention. No, I have paid attention. I have paid attention. And a lot of – look at my Twitter yesterday. A lot of BYU fans, oh, this is not a great hire. Mm, purchase, purchase. <laughs> I think this guy's a great hire. And I hope I hope I'm wrong. I hope BYU fans are just excited about it. Uh, UK getting Pope was uh, genius. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I think he was. And again, look at the comments section. Kentucky fan all upset until Rupp Arena was full and the '96 team got off the bus. Hmm. He was a really. I'm telling you, uh, bring your own beer if you if you like. Sure. Uh, Mike Smith, from what I have seen, BYU fans are very surprised in a good way and happy with the new hire. I hope you guys are right. I mean, I'm sure there are plenty of people who are happy with it, but I also think there's an equal, uh, you know, amount of people who were not amused with it. Yeah. And doubt it. Uh, if the 2021 Jazz had Caruso, I would have become a Laker fan. There you go. I think. He... That's bullshit. Uh, jacked, off, jacked off. Will the Jazz make a, any significant moves in the summer? I mean. I don't know. How do you interpret what, what Danny said about Keontae? Because, because if Danny Ainge doesn't view Keontae George as the franchise point guard, then he views him as a number two. That kind of tells you what they're looking at. I don't understand why they say the things they say. Yeah, I don't get it. What good did that bring? What What was the... And, and I love this side of the jazz, too. This is what I've always found this amusing. They do these sit downs, right? Where it's like in house. It's not with an uh, an outside media outlet, and they'll come on and they'll ask the hard question, and it's clearly a canned answer about, 
well, Keontae is a great young man. And, you know, I just, I'm not sure that he's a number one franchise guy. I see him as off the ball more. And it's like, okay, so what you're really saying is that, is that you like Keontae's three point stroke, you love his athleticism, and you view him as a scoring guard, not a point guard. And you need to go out and figure out who that point guard's going to be, and you need a legitimate wing. That's what you're really saying. I, the Jazz are frustrating. And, We've talked about this ad nauseum with Ryan Smith. You know what the sad thing is? All he can do is prove me wrong, which I would love it if he did. You traded Rudy and Don. You traded Boyan. You traded Buckets or Bench. You traded like all your dudes. Yeah. You traded, I think, arguably the most pos- pop, hello, popular jazz man we've had in, in the last seven to 10 years in Mike Conley. Oh, I thought you were saying Joe Ingles. <laughs> Stop. Uh, where did where did that money go? But in all seriousness, guys where, like guys like Joe Ingles, they're saving money on 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 that type of move. But I'm just asking, where did the money go? You know where it went into into buying an NHL franchise. Yeah, because he's not paying out payroll. He did not replace Don and Rudy. He did not replace Boyan. I guess the question is, I was thinking about this last night while I was trying to find stuff to talk about today. Like, the question is, what what makes this period of time where the Jazz are just completely irrelevant and terrible, what would make it worth it? I, I mean, inside of the next decade, because that's how I'm looking at it. I, I, every, all the Jazz fans want to be like, oh, the next five years. I don't think it's a five-year thing. I think it's a 10-year thing. I think that he's going to he's gonna get the Yotes up here. They're going to invest heavy in them for the next three four years and they'll do some nice things and then they'll start kind of ramping that down, but it's going to take a few seasons to kind of slowly ramp off of that. So that's what five or six years now. Why, if you are Ryan Smith, would you spend money on the jazz? It's a legitimate question. I, I'm I, and, and jagged off or whoever, whatever jazz fan wants. And I know we have a lot of jazz fans that watch the show. So I'm just asking. Cause what are you going to do if he doesn't? You know what you're going to do? You're going to buy tickets. Mm -hmm. You're going to buy his hellaciously bad uniforms. What is there to be excited about with this team right now? You have a head coach who I think there are a ton of questions to be asked. Is Will Hardy the right guy? You're awful defensively and have been now for two full seasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, my money. We don't have talent. Okay, you don't have talent. You're, You're not developing talent. David Fisdale's not here anymore. So who's this great player that you've developed? Because now you say Keontae's not a number one. So if you want to talk jazz, let's talk jazz. But what I'm telling you is, this ain't the show to come to. I know we're just fucking casuals and stuff. Yeah. This isn't the show to come to to get your polished, hey, here's your polished turd, be on your way. Yeah, listen listen to the radio in Salt Lake if you want, if you want sugar-coated. You're not getting that here. I'm telling you right now, Ryan Smith is not going to invest in this team. And I hope I am completely wrong. I hope I am flat wrong, and I don't know a thing that I'm talking about. I haven't been wrong to this point. I am telling you, they are not going to invest in this team. They're not. They are not going to. You're not going to make a Bradley Beal type move like the Suns did. You're not going to. And everybody's, well, free agents won't come here, Monty. They will. Yeah, they will. But you're not trying to get free agents to come here. Because you're not trying to spend money because you're not trying to win because you're trying to to buy an NHL team. That's going to cost you probably 1.5 to 1.7 billion dollars. And you're not a billionaire. I dude, I think you know what's funny about that? I think that there's a lot of like shock when you say that. Hey, Ryan Smith isn't a billionaire. Well, what do you mean? Like he's a billionaire? Well, but if you really take a look, yeah, he may be a billionaire on the financial statements. He may be a billionaire on paper. But when you're talking about actual operating capital, actual liquidity, like, hey, I can go and do X, he's not a billionaire in that way. Because if he was, this would look completely different. And you know why it would look completely different? Because I guarantee you right now, a businessman of Ryan Smith's stature, and he is a damn good businessman. Like, don't doubt that. He is. If you were, if you had that kind of capital, you wouldn't be asking for taxpayer money because it's harder to get taxpayer money to do all the things you want to do. There's more red tape. There's more unless stuff you're you got to work Unless through. you're in Utah and you get a rubber stamp from the legislature. Not not insignificant. He started the process officially to create that district and use the bond money. Yeah, the rent of, uh, the uh, 
what do they call it? A renovation zone, I think, or whatever. Yes, the arena district. Yeah. So whether he builds a new one or renovates Delta Center, now all that is going to start moving through and go to a final vote. Uh, Jeremy Bolton, I'm, I'm with you, Tanner. From everything I've read and seen on social, BYU fans are ecstatic over Kevin Smith's hire. They hired Kevin. It's Kevin Young. That's fine. I hope I'm wrong. And and inevitably, you always hear from the the negative people. I don't. I'm not a guy that reads Cougar Board or. I just, I, I don't put time into it. Yeah. I read our comments on YouTube. I read our tweet. I read Twitter and there's been a lot of negativity around it. Uh, Brandon Butler, hint, hint. We may go for Trey Young or Murray in the off season. Is Trey Young coming to Salt Lake City? Mm. I don't know about that. If you're going to get a DeJounte Murray, you better trade for him. And I don't think they want that character problem. I think Trey Young's a very interesting guy because he instantly becomes the alpha. And yeah, I, th I think as a, a star player in the league, let's say, or a guy that can be a star, the attractiveness of Salt Lake is that you can go out and make huge money on your next contract. You're yeah. going to come to a bad team. You're going to ball out. You're going to put up numbers and you're going to get paid. My question is, when do they trade Laurie Marketing? Because it's been talked about. It has been talked about. Um, Tanner Plummer, Cougar Board is worse than Newsmax. I, I just don't read it. Uh, jacked off. Ryan Smith will relocate the Jazz. He won't. He's building a new arena, man. Yeah, what do you mean? You, you don't build a new arena to... You don't build a new arena to... To relocate the team. You know, uh, 19... Whoa, nine, uh, Mike Smith. They hired Kevin Smith to do an LDS version of the Clerks movie. Should be wild. <laughs> 1984. Is the tax transfer from taxpayers a set number or is it the baseline? It's a billion dollar. It's a billion dollars. And what it is, essentially, they're 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 buying bonds, essentially funding a bond initiative to pay for this district. And taxpayers in Salt Lake City are going to pay a half percent sales tax hike to pay back the bonds over a 30-year period. It's an absolute travesty. It's a horrendous business deal for us. Yeah. Horrendous. There is nothing good from it. There's nothing good from it. Uh, Mayor of Monty Town, Cougar Board is the ultimate trust me bro site. Well, I, thought, I thought that was us. <laughs> well, so, and I just want to review really quick because I, I just want to make sure I'm on the same page with everybody. So, so earlier in the show, I guess it was made clear that ESPN just tells us everything to say on right. the show. Right. So right. ESPN tells us everything to say. And, and then later in the show, just now, I guess that we're a football only show. I guess so. Well, fuck! Why didn't you tell me that? Yeah, that I mean, makes show prep a lot yeah, easier. Yeah, made a lot easier, <laughs> dude. Yeah, I mean, damn. As far as Ryan Smith goes, all I'm saying is, I think Ryan is a paper billionaire that controls the media in this town. Nobody questions Ryan Smith, and it gives him a free pass to do whatever he wants. He does not have to win because. He has the minions that'll buy his tickets and buy his ugly ass jerseys. Yep. So nobody questions him about how the purples were a year late. Nobody questions him about how the fans hate the jerseys. Nobody questions the fact that people don't want hockey here, or, or I shouldn't say that, aren't clamoring for hockey here. He's just given a free pass on that. And notice he does not do local media very often. He does national media because he's, he's cool mil billionaire bro. But again, if you're truly a billionaire, why aren't you doing what Steve Ballmer did? Why are you not doing what the Crockies did? Pay for your own damn stadium. Why are you not doing that? Because he's not a billionaire. Yeah. He's not a billionaire. That's, to me, what it comes down to. John Jackson, hello. I'm a Jazz fan, but are we giving Ryan Smith too much power in Utah sports? Jesus. Giving him? He took it already. Who's going to say no to him? If, if If you don't, and I know we don't have sources, trust me, bro. Ryan Smith had significant influence over their hiring of, of Young at BYU. He pushed for him. Uh, he's getting a billion dollars from the legislature without ever going to a public vote. I had a guy in the YouTube comment section yesterday telling me it went to a vote. Uh, it went to a vote. The legislator voted for it. That's who you guys voted for, so the people voted. No, they did not vote. It's not, if you look at, look at the stadium situation with the Texas Rangers, go look at the stadium situation with the Atlanta Braves, go look and find me the publicly funded sports arena that Kansas was good City. for the people. Kansas City. And when you put it to a vote, 
Is there a better dynasty right now than the Kansas City Chiefs where the people said, fuck you, we're not paying for your stadium renovation, billionaire? We don't say that here because we don't put it to a public vote. And how dare you question Ryan Smith? Ryan Smith has been nothing short of an abject disappointment yeah. as the owner of the Utah Jazz. He has not invested in talent. He's not invested in community. He has not invested in anything other than bringing in an NHL franchise here. You don't know what you're talking about, Monty. Did you see the reporting from Arizona yesterday? When the Arizona Coyotes left Glendale for Tempe, Ryan Smith called Gary Bettman and said, bring him to Salt Lake City. So let me get this right. This has been going on for years. He has been chasing the Arizona Coyotes for years. wonder why he didn't replace Don and Rudy. Hmm. Oh, we're rebuilding. Ah, oh, Jay-Z and Danny Ainge. So when you guys told me I didn't know what I was talking about when I said they're going to trade Rudy and they're going to... And they traded Rudy. And then mysteriously, they completely pivoted on Donovan Mitchell. Because remember, we're, well, ESPN tells us what to say. Yeah, We told you, hey, they're going to build around Donovan Mitchell. 20 minutes later, what did Woj tweet? The Jazz are going to build around Donovan Mitchell. And then much like Jordan Clarkson, they did a flip. And what happened? Well, they've decided to trade Donovan Mitchell mm. and Boyan Bogdanovich. And Bucket O'Bench. And they never paid anybody. Did they give Jordan Clarkson a massive extension? They gave him a very team-friendly deal. Did they give Laurie Markkinen a huge extension? No, he's on a team-friendly deal. Colin Sexton, team-friendly deal. Are they doing everything they can do to make the playoffs this year? Tank. Did they hire one of the best head coaches in the NBA? No, that's expensive. They hired Will Hardy, who can't coach defense. So again, I'm just, I'm just over here. I'm just over here. I'm just asking you. Tell asking me. Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. James, the Jazz needs Zach Eady. No, they don't. Zach Eady is not an NBA player. Zach Eady is a slow, plodding, Udoka-type player. He's Doke, man. He's Doke Azubuki. He, he is going to have to be markedly better. That cat cannot score above the free throw line. And really, it's above the the, the circle. They, with all due respect. When the Jazz were really good, they had Mark Eaton. Okay, next comment. You need a big guy to anchor the deep. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, no, you don't. That's not today's NBA. Did you all see Mark Cuban paying his fair share of taxes? I've always been a Cuban fan. $280 million. Yep. Feels like uh, Utah sports has turned into the communist Russia under Ryan Smith. He is what it be, right? Um, Eric Wasikowski, what was the Monty's view on a younger Mike Illich? Who, same as Ryan Smith or better than? Don't, couldn't tell you. Uh, back when McMurray were the, when McMurray were the Indians. Okay. Jerry Jones paid for Jerry world. Mostly not all of it. He got some help there. Danny Ainge needs to be held accountable for the botch job he's done on this so-called rebuild, but it's not Danny Ainge. Has Danny Ainge been allowed to spend money? How did he botch the rebuild when he, he's, You're not even rebuilding at this point. He's drafted pretty well. Can't see. And this is a Keontae George is actually a really good player. Yeah. But now you got to invest in development. Danny Ainge is not the problem. Danny Ainge is not the problem. Anyone, uh, UW fan, Jim, anyone going to hit the like button today? Yeah, seriously. We're, I haven't even looked at it. Uh, we're over a thousand views. We have 66 likes. Come on, y'all hit the like button while I bitch and moan about rap Soto. Let me tell you about launch monitors before we get out of here. So I am a golf addict. I golf. Oui. Shut up. I we he's right. We golf. I golf. I do something golf pretty much six days a week. Um, usually play three, four rounds a week, two, three range sessions. Needed a launch monitor. I have a setup in my backyard. Order a rap soto. Shows up yesterday. Does not work. Cannot connect to any any mobile device. Does not work. Cannot call him. Cannot email him. Can't get a message back. No support. 
just won't connect through Bluetooth. They say you just turn it on, download their app, open their app, turn on their app, so to boom, connected. Doesn't work. Okay, maybe it's my iPad. It's new. Okay, let's try an iPhone. Doesn't work. Let's try a, a, a computer. Didn't work. Let's try a laptop. Didn't work. Won't connect to anything Bluetooth. Just won't do it. Mm-hmm. And the thing that drives me crazy now, I understand we're all cost cutting, but can you not have somebody that I can chat with? Can you not have somebody who will email me back? Let's get crazy. At six o'clock central time yesterday, you can't have somebody I can call on the phone? Nope. 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 And nope. So I bought a different launch monitor and I'm returning the Rap Soto. And here we are, 14 hours later, still no, still no emails. And, and I think the hard part is like if you're you know, so if you're someone who's an avid golfer, it's not just a casual thing for you. Like you, you really are trying to get better. Like it, 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 it's hard to get out and practice every day unless you have something in your backyard, unless you don't have to leave the house to practice. And the reason, you know, for all of you who don't golf, the reason that a, a launch monitor is important is because it essentially allows you to hit into a net and it tells you, Hey, this is this is how far you hit that ball. It, it, it your spin rate, your ball speed. It shows you where the ball Shot is going. Shape. Like so, it allows you to say, okay, cool. Because like at a driving range, you can see where the ball went, right? You can watch the ball, and you're like, all right, cool. I pulled that left. I hit it right. Whatever. But you can't do that when you're hitting into a net, obviously. Which is why having a launch monitor is so clutch. It you have to have it. Yeah, and you have and, to have and it. And so it's this whole thing where. Where, you know, we look this rap soto up and it's like, all right, cool. This is a more budget friendly option. We're not trying to spend like five grand on some crazy ass launch monitor. This seemed like a good option. And everybody raved about it. Hey, it's a compact package. It's it's nice. It's easy. It's got a case. Like everything is supposed to work well. You get it and plug it and play. It doesn't it doesn't plug connect. and play. And it's just frustrating because it's like, dude, like it, it we're not talking about a, a a motor vehicle here. We're not talking about you know, some, some rocket ship thing. It's a launch monitor. That's all it is. And, and, and the idea that like, I would almost understand it more if it could connect, but it just didn't do a great job of reading the ball. Okay. Hey, it's a budget friendly option. Maybe there's better tracking, but at least, you know, this will do good enough. The idea that it doesn't even connect is insane to me. I, I, I just, I can't believe we got the one unit that just doesn't work. It, it's wild. I'll keep you updated on it. I'm supposed to hear from back from them today at some point, but I already ordered a uh, uh, Mevo flight scope or whatever it's yeah. called. So it's over. Yeah. There you go. The Monty Show is always presented by our friends at The Advocates, theadvocates.com. Hit the like button. Join our membership. $1.99 a month. $10 a month gets you into our members only content. Join the $10.99. Hit Jake on uh, Instagram, SLC Jake. They'll put you in the members only group until tomorrow. Say goodbye, Jake. Goodbye, Jake. Thank you.